Let's take a closer look at what an engineer might come to expect out of what is called your more elementary or basic FPGA module a medium capability FPGA module, and then to the heights to which the FPGA soars. The basic FPGA module. These are lower end capability FPGA modules, usually based upon an FPGA such as the Altera Cyclone or the Xilinx Spartan. They will support some combination of your basic digital I.O. types, TTL, RS-422, 485, LVDS. They may have some memory support external to the FPGA, but on the FPGA module itself. Perhaps 64K by 16 of SRAM and the required memory interface. Some level of clock management is always a must. Some of these devices will support more than one clock source, PLLs and some ability to, internally to the FPGA, generate multiple logic clocks. These are usually accomplished by using what is frequently called a DCM, or Digital Clock Manager. And then, for those intense compute or DSP applications, some of the FPGAs at this level will support in-fabric multipliers, up to, say, 26 by 18, 18, and be capable of supporting DSP IP cores from multiple parties. The medium size FPGA module provides a higher level of capability. FPGA modules in this category are typically based upon FPGAs of the Xilinx Vertex 4 class. They will support your common higher speed host CPU buses PMC, PCI. They will support some combination of your basic digital I.O. types, TTL, RS-422, 485, LVDS, and make possible the processing of high-speed analog. They will have considerably more memory external to the FPGA, but on the FPGA module itself, perhaps 256K by 36, and larger. SRAM for post-processed data, DDR RAM of 64 megabits by 32 for pre-processed data, and high speed on the FPGA device block RAM up to say maybe 1.7 megabits. Multiple DCMs for clock management including PLLs are a must. Large numbers of in-fabric multipliers and DSP IP cores are pretty standard at this level of FPGA module as well as support for logic modeling tools such as ChipScope, ModelSim, and DSP modeling tools such as MATLAB. The large size FPGA module provides a very high and ever-expanding level of capability. FPGA modules in this category are typically based upon FPGAs of the Xilinx Vertex 5 class. They will support your highest speed host CPU buses, PMC, PCI, PCI-X going up to 64 bits wide by 133 MHz, and PCI Express. They will support some combination of your basic digital I.O. types, TTL, RS-422, 485, LVDS, and make possible the processing of high-speed analog. They will have considerable memory support external to the FPGA, but on the FPGA module itself. Perhaps 256K by 64 bit, and larger SRAM for post processed data. DDR RAM of 64 megabits by 32 for pre processed data. And high speed on the FPGA device block RAM up to, for instance, 2.8 megabits. Multiple DCMs for clock management, including PLLs, are a must. Clock speeds are supported up to a blazing 550 MHz. Large numbers, up to 640 of in-fabric multipliers and DSP IP cores, are pretty standard at this level of FPGA module. Flexible mezzanine-based I.O. enables hardware interface reconfiguration for widely varied application profiles 
on all the same FPGA module. And yes, there is continued support for logic modeling tools such as ChipScope Model Sim and DSP modeling tools, MATLAB. Let's take a look at the makeup of a high-end FPGA module. There are a number of necessary building block components that make up a typical high-end FPGA module. The number of the building blocks and the extent of the building blocks, the size, the capability, the speed, these will vary. <coughs> First off, there is the FPGA device sitting prominently on the module. Its interface to the outside world is via its general purpose I.O., which may be routed to the front mezzanine area of the module, to the rear I.O. connector of the module, or to both. Of course, the FPGA module, when it plays as part of a computer system, offers the appropriate interface to the host CPU. Here, the PMC interface is based upon the PCI-PCIX standard. Secondly, there are the data storage areas for pre-processed data in the DDR2 SDRAM and the post-processed data in the dual port SRAM. Pre-processed data storage is essentially FPGA working storage. It is interfaced to the FPGA alone. Post-processed data storage is usable as FPGA working storage as well but has the unique capability to facilitate data transfer between the FPGA and the host CPU via DMA transfer and vice versa. Lastly, there is the FPGA program storage area in Flash. The actual logic that executes in the FPGA can either be loaded directly into the FPGA device over the PCI PCIX bus or stored in the flash. Logic stored in the flash is automatically downloaded into the FPGA upon power up of the FPGA module, whereas logic loaded directly into the FPGA device over the PCI PCIX bus must be programmatically downloaded to the FPGA device by the host CPU application software prior to use of the FPGA module. Here we have a block diagram of a typical FPGA module. As we noted earlier, general purpose I.O. is accessible from the front mezzanine adapter, the rear PMC I.O. connector, or both. A communications application, for instance, implementing a UART equivalent for protocol conversion would be sampling a serial input stream at some synchronous I.O. clock and capturing the serial bitstream, deserializing and storing it into a FIFO, i.e. in the SDRAM by way of the FPGA internal memory controller and then outputting the reformatted information. A software defined radio will perhaps sample an analog waveform, extract the carrier with the support of DSP blocks, perform some algorithmic transformations, perhaps using the DSP blocks in conjunction with a soft or hard CPU. The resultant information could be consumed locally or again transferred to FIFO storage for additional processing or for transfer to the host CPU. Host CPU transfer of information would be implemented using DMA methodology with interrupts being configured to signal transfer complete. DMA transfers would, once configured and activated, occur independent of the FPGA activity and be managed completely by the PCIX bus bridge, controlling the pathways between the FPGA device and the host CPU separated only by the PCI or PCIX bus. Notice that the logic simple segmentation is accompanied by potentially different clock rates. The Vertex 5 FPGA is capable of supporting up to 12 digital clock managers. 
No one FPGA module will be the most efficient and cost-effective solution for every application. That is why Acromag took it upon itself to provide a family of FPGA modules with varying levels of memory, interface capability, environmental suitability, speed, DSP capability, high-level language support and form factor. The most common cross-platform form factors are industry pack modules found at the lower end of the chart and PMC modules found at the upper end of the chart.